Lord God, we pray for the mothers at this time, Lord God, they, who they are, and they know who they are, whether it be spiritual, or whether it be by blood. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for them pouring into the lives of individuals, pouring into the lives of this country, Lord God, that, that it's important to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We pray for them, Lord God, this day that they know that they are recognized and held in esteem. And we esteem them, Lord God, because they led us to you and you alone. Father God, we thank you for them. We thank you whoever they are and wherever they are right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you said in Psalms 57 that if we can find shelter in the shadow of your wings, Lord God, we, that will be a safe place that we can call a shelter, that place that we can call a home. So we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord God, for confession that cleanses the soul and the heart and the mind. We thank you, Lord God, for the unity of the faith, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. We thank you, Lord God, for the services today, the giving today. We thank you, Lord God, for the worship songs and the persons who will sing it. We thank you, Lord God, for those who would see this message today, whether it be on Facebook or whether it be in person. Lord God, we just thank you for your blessing already in advance. We pray for our pastor, Lord God, can let him continue, Lord God, to be encouraged, to continue to preach your word in season and out of season. We thank you, Lord God, for the leadership here, the ushers and the deacons and the officers and the trustees and the nurses and those who are working, Lord God, in whatever capacity, Lord God, thank you for us working together. We thank you for our visitors. We thank you for our friends. We thank you most importantly for the love that started with you. We pray for those, Lord God, who could not come, Lord God, let them know that they are missed and that they are loved. We pray for those who are upon that sick bed right now. We just ask that you touch them, Lord God, with your majestic and powerful hand. That, Father God, you just bring more life and bring more vigor into their hearts and their souls and their lungs and their limbs. We pray, Lord God, that they understand that we love them and you love them more than we could love them. So, Father God, we just pray, Lord God, that everything work according to your divine standard. We ask for your heavenly hope to be showed forth this day, Mother's Day, this day we celebrate. And we ask, Lord God, that everything be done according to your divine standard. In Jesus' powerful and majestic name we pray. Amen. Thank you as we continue in our worship service. We know that we serve a mighty good God. We serve an awesome God. This week, we have celebrated World War II veterans. We have celebrated teachers. We have celebrated uh, health care workers, nurses. And we thank God. We know that all things that have happened to us, that God has allowed the victories, the valleys, the, the storms, we thank God for it because we know that God doesn't make a mistake. Everything happens in our life for a purpose. <laughs> Lord, help us to see your will in our lives. And I know that if any of them could talk today and give their testimony, they would tell you that it's all because of Jesus, that there's just something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many know that in the time of storm, you can call on Jesus? Jesus, 
and your tithes. Some of you may have them with you. We do encourage you, whether you are a member, you're a visitor, you're on Facebook, if you would like to sow a seed into our ministry, we are in the process. As you know, we're at the site of where our church burned in September 2019. If you would like to be a seed and sow a seed in this ministry, you can do that through PayPal. Our PayPal account is new, N-E-W, G. B Z 1885. It's our church initials and the year that our church was birthed in 1885. So again, you can be a blessing to this ministry through PayPal New GBC 1885. And thank you so much uh, for your participation. Now we will yield to. Um, I'm sorry, that is a, a cash app account. It is not PayPal, it's our Cash App account. Again, new GBZ, 1885. Thank you. Father God, we come to you this morning. We praise on our lips, thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for all things and all ways. Thanking you for goodness, thanking you for mercy, thanking you for grace. We thank you this morning, Heavenly Father, for opportunity. Though we are not in a building, we are able to gather in under this tree to worship and praise your holy name. We thank you also this morning, Father, for mothers and mother's love. Heavenly Father, they were our first encouragers and lifelong uh, lovers of their children. We thank you for mom. Father God, we ask that you bless this offering that's been lifted in your namesake. It is our desire that it be used to build up, maintain your earthly kingdom. Heavenly Father, we pray for guidance as we build, rebuild our structure, Heavenly Father, because we know we can only do it with your help. Now in the precious, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we give you thanks through this prayer. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are here. We thank God for you. Uh, there is no love like mother's love. And we know that God instilled that special love in mothers. And one thing I've learned about mothers is they'll go all the way with you. 
even though uh, a lot of times it's tough uh, being a mother, especially in times like this, uh, God has put something in your heart to illustrate the love that he had for his church and his mom. And so we thank God for all of you being here today. We thank God for this number that's in this service. And uh, we're just going to try to lift up and have a light moment because we know that this is a special time to celebrate our mothers. Um, we know that uh, if you have a mother living, you need to hug her and squeeze her and let her know you love her right now because we don't know what tomorrow might bring. Uh, and if you got a mother, as one of the ministers was saying this morning, that's going on to glory, every now and then you ought to take some flowers out to the grave and just say, thank you, mama. Uh, because if they're in heaven, they can hear you. We have biblical evidence that even though the gulf is wide, God still hears our prayers. Amen. And so we want to uh, give this special day for our mother's and we know that they hold a special place in our hearts, amen? Again, thank you for this number out here. Um, and let me add this too, that uh, some mothers who are here are surrogate mothers. They've never had a child of their own, but they have adopted children. They look after okay. children, they watch over children. So to all of the mothers, uh, we give you praise and thanks this morning uh, for God choosing you. Um, this morning, I want to try to bring you some inspiration, Mom. And it's really a special thing for everybody to listen to this. Um, but as I was going through, there were so many mothers to really choose uh, out of the Bible, uh, history of the Bible, the mothers who have done all the way with their children. Uh, we think about Hannah and Samuel. We can think about uh, other mothers that have gone on and done exactly uh, what they could. Uh, we think about Hagar and Ishmael. Uh, but the thing about is we want to bring out today uh, the mother of Moses. And I think the mother of Moses illustrates uh, what God wanted us to have to understand in times like these and even what it was like back in the day. And so I'd like to read from you if you brought your Bibles. I'd like to read to you from Exodus chapter 2 and verses 1 through 6. This is according to the ESV, and I'd like to read into your hearing these words. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took his wife, a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, some say, might say in your Bible, goodly child. She hid him for three months. When she could no longer hide him, no longer. She took him for him a basket and made of bulrushes and dropped it with uh, bitumen and pitch. She put the child in the place among the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister stood at the distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to the baby at the river while her young woman walked the reeds and sent her servant woman. And she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrews women, the child from you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. I'd like to talk to you from this thought. Motherhood, comma, takes faith. Motherhood, comma, takes faith. Let me reverse that around so everybody can understand. It takes faith to be a mother. It takes faith to be a mother. Notice at Moses' birth, these are difficult times for Moses and Josheved his mom, and Amram, the dad. And they thought that the decree from Pharaoh came out because the children of Israel began to grow and multiply down in Goshen, and they became afraid that uh, the, the, the Israelites would take over. And so he made a decree that every male should be uh, dumped in the river. 
And so uh, they being fearing, God-fearing parents, uh, was not going to do that. But look at the play that she did. Uh, Pharaoh says, throw all the male children into the river. She put her son in the river in a basket uh, dog with slime and pitch. Remember that slime and pitch a little bit later on. We'll talk about that. But the birth commended on briefly, obviously, Pharaoh's decree jeopardized Moses' life. The name of Moses' parents are given, but uh, you have to understand that Amram was a father, uh, and his mother was Josheved. They were from the house of Levi, and the couple had two other children, Miriam, and they also had Aaron. Aaron was three years older than Moses, assuming that the exodus occurred in 1446. And since Moses was 80 years old at the time, he was born in 1526 before, before Christ. At the beginning of this reign of Tutmos, 1526 to 1512, or at the end of Amenthro, first reigns in 1545 to 1526, Moses' parents decided, and I know that it was strong from Josheved's point, that they made a decree among themselves that they were going to trust God, and she kept him for three months. You know how hard it is to keep a bouncing baby boy three months? To keep him from crying? To keep him satisfied? Uh, wanting to go out three months? So we have to understand that this is a, a task. She knew that times was difficult, but she decided she was going to do whatever it took in order to get them through. She had faith in God, and this is where the rubber meets the road. She had faith in God in order to put her son in God's hand. Let me be specific about this. She put him, or decided to put him in the river, the Nile River. Alligators, crocodiles, anything can happen not knowing where her son would end up, but she watched as long as she could. And so we have to understand that a mother's tuition and listening to God, some of us, we are here today because of our mothers. We are here today because mama prayed for us. Even when we were too silly and, and too stubborn to pray for ourselves, mother prayed for us, watched over us, and gave us many, many chances over and over again. We have to understand that when they saw this child, she realized this was a fine child. It says in the Bible that he was a goodly child, a beautiful and healthy child. Uh, Moses, it says, was no ordinary child. God had a purpose for him in his life. And so we have to understand that we have to wait on God now. From a child to 80, God was still working with Moses. I'm a living witness that God is not finished with us yet. He's still working on us. And so we have to be patient with God, and we still have to thank God for mothers along the way. In trying times like this, we need a mother that has faith. Because we know a lot of times when mother would let us go out, when we thought we were too grown, we wanted to leave home, um, we had to call mother at certain times. Um, the thing about it is when children go to jail, the first place that they call, they don't call dad. They call mama. When, when children are in trouble, they call mama rather than dad. I don't know if it's just a built-in thing, but God put it there and we see it. This is terrible times right now that we're living in and Pharaoh has not given a decree. But American society has deemed and, 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 and categorized who should live and who should not. This is terrible time. A mother today has to have faith because here it is. You have raised this child from birth. You have given, as one of the Eric Simon on uh, Channel 13 was said this morning, it took 38 hours of labor. 38 hours of labor to bring her daughter into this world. And how dare someone would uh, interfere with your child. You raised them, you fed them, you've grown them up, you sent them to college, you do things for them, but how dare someone feel that they 
have the right to take your son or your daughter's life. Mm. That's the world that we're living in. But you have to have faith to trust that your children will go out and come back in. Moses' mother, Josephine, decided to hide this child. Uh, you can't hide your child in a basket, but I'm a living witness you can hide your child in God. You don't have to put him in a basket, but you can put him in God's arms. The safest place for a mother to put her children is in the arms of an almighty God. We need to understand that we cannot be with our children 24-7, 365. But I know a man who sits high and looks low that is able, is able to keep us in perfect peace. And we need to understand that she put him among the reeds. She didn't know what was going to happen to Moses. But there a, comes a time in life when we must let go and let go. Amen. We can't keep our children forever. We can't watch over them forever. So we got to trust God with them. I remember my mother a long time ago would tell me, that's all right, you keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I've already turned you over to God. Yes. And that would scare me more. Then his mama would get a strap and get ready to get at me. The thing is, she says, I'm going to let God handle it. Even though I know that at night, there were sleepless nights when I was out and about. We here see, ironically, Josephine putting her son into the Nile. In one sense, was obeying Pharaoh's edict to throw babies, boys, in the river. She said, I'm going to throw mine in the river, but I'm going to put him in the arms of God. And that's what we need to do today is uh, put them in the arms of God. Um, it's good to have a built-in babysitter because Miriam stood at a distance and it was obedience to her mom uh, as she watched this little basket go down uh, the Nile River. You notice at first I read that she said she had taken care of it and lined that little basket, wicker basket, that Moses was in and she took slime and pitch. A geologist for Exxon was reading uh, the story of Moses and realized that where slime and pitch is, there is tar and if it's tar, it's got to be oil. One of the greatest oil finds was done because somebody re read the words of God. Isn't that amazing? That God has a way she took tar and made it the same tar that Noah pitched the ark with to make it float. In order to make your children float where they need to go, you got to anoint them not with slime and pitch, but you got to anoint them with the power of a mighty God from on high. You got to wrap your kids in the love of an almighty God. And this is what she did. Because times are hard. Josephine knew that this day was coming after three months. I can no longer hold this boy. He's getting, he's getting up. He's crying. He's moving around. We're not charged, or your mothers today are not charged, or they're not facing putting their children in the Nile River because of a hard dictator. But they are putting them today in the rivers of, of peace. There's so much hate out there. Your child, 17, 18, going to school, it used to be a guarantee that they come home in the evening time. There's no more guarantee that your children will come home. Today, mothers must put their sons and their daughters in the river in equality. Just because of the color of your skin. They don't judge you by the contact that you carry. And so we have to understand that mothers, mothers have to have faith in order to know that if your son go jogging, it might not, he might not come back home. Yeah. Something because there's hate and evil in the world. Yeah. And we need to understand that this is for all mothers and all fathers. You need to hug and love your kids because someone out there might not just like the way your kid works, might not like the way your kid serve God, might not like the way your, ch your child go to uh, church, no matter what creed or color, the evil is in the world. And a mother is challenged with this. 
It's often said that when children are small, they're on your knee. But when they grow up and become teenagers and young adults, they're on your heart all night. I, 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 I wish somebody, if I had two or three to pray with me, that stayed awake all last night thinking about where their children were. God, are you going to take care of them? We have to understand that a mother today is, is faced with putting her son and her daughter in the river unjust because somebody is not going to treat them right. Uh, if you don't have a certain thing, you might not have friends. Mother today are charged with putting their sons and their daughters in the river of uncertainty. You don't know what the world is going to do. You don't know what's going. Today, mothers are facing this pandemic. You don't know whether to send your child out uh, to the store or whether you send your child out, you try to have them at home, you go to a store, and there's someone that dares to approach them that's not wearing a mask. The man the other day, this young lady working in the store, and because she asked him to put a mask on, he wiped his nose on her shirt. Do you hear me? We have to understand that evil is in the world. But this is what mothers and fathers must face today. But I know a God who sits high and looks low. Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this text. Can you see God's providence and clearly evidence in the care of this infant? Put him in. She kept him for three months. Put him in the Nile River in a basket. The providence of God washed over the child. And I'm a living witness that the providence of God washed over me because I did some foolish things in my life. In fact, I should be dead and sleeping in my grave right now. But because of the providence of God, I'm standing here this morning preaching his word. Hallelujah, somebody. That we know, we know that the providence of God washed over Moses but it took faith from Joshua to trust God. How many of you willing to trust God with your children? I don't care how old, I don't care how old they are, you still worry about your children. It's a dangerous world out here. Young lady putting on makeup, getting ready to go to work. Boyfriends who's Stiff, he feels, shoots in the head. I'm pretty sure that that mother is hurting today. Sure, it hurts to lose a loved one. I hope and pray that no mother loses a son or daughter. But it's got to be a painful thing. But it takes a strong mother to realize that if they have faith in Christ Jesus, they will see their sons and their daughters again. Can you be like Joshua Bed to where uh, God will step in? And because uh, sometimes God allows a building to burn to help us. <laughs> if you've lost a child, you need to talk to a mother who's lost a child. They can help you. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, you don't know what it feels like to lose a child. And I hope and pray nobody goes through that. But through life, we're going to lose something. We're going to lose something. And so we have to understand that God's providence is here. His, his providence is miraculous. And here it is. Look at God. Uh, he watches over the child. The child is raised up in Pharaoh's own house. Look at God. Here it is. He's trying to kill uh, the Hebrew children. And it's ironic that the leader of the Hebrew slaves is sleeping in his bed. Nobody but God. That's got Moses protected and sometimes God will hide your children among the enemy. We have it right in the text. We, we know that God can see way down the road than we could ever see. We need to understand when Pharaoh's daughter opened the box the infant, the infant cries, evoked her in a compassion. You have women, as I said before, who don't have, they've never given birth to a child, but they 
adopt children and they love children just like their own. And I commend them for being a surrogate mother. I like them for bringing in and we have uh, nurses uh, who is working overtime. We have mothers who have children at home and they can't help their own children, but they are taking care of other folks' children and uh, staying and holding folks' hand as they pass into another world. What an awesome God we serve. What a wonderful instinct that he has put in mothers along the way. Several women played a part in Moses' success. You do know it takes a, a village. And in this village, they had some midwives. The midwives were told every male child should be thrown in the river. They were supposed to report that. But the midwives were strong, but the women who had the babies were strong, because when the midwives got there, they had sense enough not to fool with the children, but the mothers had already given birth and had the babies already ready to go. Look at God. And so we have to understand that not only Joseph, not only the midwives, but even Mary made sure that Moses went into good hands. How can you assure that your child or your daughter is in good hands? You've got to give them to Jesus. And you've got to give them at the earliest time to where they can float and remain in the arms of God. I watched on yesterday a mother bearing her son. It's not really supposed to be that way. But we don't know what God's got in store for us. But the thing is, is that it takes faith to hang in there. I know it does. I've seen it. It takes faith. I watch my mother with my brother. It takes faith to hang in there. It takes faith not to give up on God because he's letting some one of your sons or daughters go home. Only Jesus can fill that void. And I know what I'm talking about. I just wish I had two or three to, to, to agree with me that God knows how to fill a void. We don't give up on him because we lose something. See, the, the key to it is that uh, Jochebed had faith in God and she did not dwell on what she might lose. She dwelled on what God was going to do. And when you've got God on your side, when you know what God will do, you can go to bed at night. We need to understand that God is an awesome God. Uh, this mother... Uh, has done many things. And it says the name of Moses in the Hebraic means massa, which means grown out. If you want your kids to be successful, you got to give them to God. If you want your kids to know the right and the wrong, you got to give them to Jesus. If you know that you have a wayward and wondering son or daughter, you still got to give them to Jesus. Don't walk off and leave them. Don't give up on them. Stay right there with them. There was another mother who had to go by faith in a son. She raised a son, brought him into this world in a lonely man. The only place that he had to be born was in a manger. <laughs> Talking about Jesus our Lord, the Christ. There Jesus has been kangaroo courted. He has been led from judgment to judgment hall. I know it was hard for her mother, for his mother, to see him being led to kangaroo, kangaroo court, kangaroo court after kangaroo court. I'm pretty sure it was hard to realize that Peter had denied her Lord, his Lord three times. I know it was hard when they nailed him to an old rugged cross. I, I know it was hard for Mary to watch her son hanging from an old rugged tree out on a hill called Calvary. I know that it was hard for Mary, but she knew that her son was going to a better place. She knew that her son was dying to save mankind. The reason why we can have hope is Jesus died out on a hill called Calvary. We need to know that Jesus loved his mother. 
Because as he was dying on the cross, he looked down at his mother and said, Mother, behold thy son. Son, being John, behold thy mother. The first gift that Jesus recordly in the Bible gave his mom was John so that she would have somebody to lean on. We need somebody to lean on in trying times like this. Nobody but Jesus, nobody but the Lord that we can lean on and depend on. Are you with me here? He, 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 he stopped dying so that he could save a wretch like me. Someone holding right next to him. This day, he says, you're going to be with me in paradise. Look at Jesus. No man takes my life. I gladly lay it down for you. And I'm pretty sure that as Jesus grew, it was hard for his mom to watch him on an old rugged cross. And, and I, you know what? I don't believe it was so much sorrow because of the nails and the spikes. But I think it was hard for Mary just to see how people could be so cruel in this world. I, I think that's one of the things that really pricked her heart, that she saw how some of the same folk he fed, some of the same folk he healed, some of the same folk that he ate with turned their backs on him. But still, he's Lord. But the good news is, is that he did not stay dead. He got up early Sunday morning without calling him in his hand. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. So here we have a mother who has faith. Again, it takes faith. Unshakable faith. Somebody's here this morning. It's feeling like they're all alone. I got news for you. You're not all alone. God is right there with you. Yeah. He has given us the assurance, Sister Alice, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. God will protect you, and he'll protect your sons and daughters if you will call them and let them know. So all mothers, glory be to God. I, my heart goes out for you because I know what you're going through. We see it in our homes every day that we pray for the whole family, that God will watch over our families, not only our families, but your families as well and all the families in the world. We pray for them. We pray for young kids uh, that's coming up who are trying to serve the Lord. They'll pray, I say, mothers, trust your children to God. And guess what? He will bring them back to you. If you trust God, God brought Moses back to Egypt to free his people. God is an awesome God, yes. and he reigns. So when you see Mama today, give her a big hug. When you look at that picture, even if she's gone to glory, give Mama a big hug. Let her know you love her. Thank her for her service. Now, here's how you do that. If mama's going on to glory, you just thank Jesus, and Jesus will get the message to mama. How about that? Huh? So we thank God for all of you. May God continue to bless and keep you uh, is our prayer. Come on, Reverend Jones, and extend the privilege of the church uh, as we go here today. We thank God for all of you. Happy Mother's Day. I wish I could hug all of you. So I'm going to give you a virtual hug to all the mothers. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the reason that we're here. Come on, baby. God bless you. Has come, we want to extend the privilege at this time. The doors of the church are now open, and we accept you in the name of the risen and true Savior Jesus Christ. Whether you be Christian by baptism or Christian experience, we accept you. If you believe in your heart,
confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord. This is the time. Why don't you come? somebody's sick, amen. We want you to just get something that's cold, refreshing, uh, not slits or, or Miller's Light. We want you to get something cold and refreshing, amen, amen. Um, we want to say a special prayer. We were going to go across the street, but right now, I would ask, brother, where, where's Brother Rivers? We'll come and uh, on the June the 9th, they're going to reclassify the land over there, the Woodland land. And um, we just want to pray over that land. I'm going to ask Brother Rivers, who has really dedicated himself and all of our officers to come and pray over that land and pray for the school board so that they would, um, God will have them to work in our favor. Come on. Uh, 
Let us pray. Oh, good and gracious God, we come once again, dear Lord, to thank you for all that you have done for us. Dear Lord, we're thankful for the powerful message that you uh, you delivered through our our uh, the angel of this church, our pastor, dear Lord. Such a powerful message on this Mother's Day. Dear Lord, we pay honor and, and tribute to, uh, to our mothers, dear Lord, whether they still be here with us on earth or they're basking in your glory and resting in peace in your heavenly kingdom. Dear Lord, we're so thankful. Dear Lord, we come to you with a petition, dear Lord. We, uh, we pray, dear Lord, that you know, dear Lord, in our hearts, we want to build a tabernacle where your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, will, will dwell among us, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we, uh, we, we, we petition you, dear Lord, that you will, you will intercede on our behalf, dear Lord, with the Texas City Independent School District, dear Lord, and open their hearts, touch their hearts, dear Lord, so that they can find uh, the way, dear Lord, the courage to grant us the, uh, the land that we need to have the, uh, the proper tabernacle, dear Lord, that we plan to dedicate to you. Dear Lord, we, we just pray, dear Lord, and we, we're trusting uh, you, dear Lord, we're, we're putting it all in your hands. And dear Lord, we're just so thankful that you've brought us thus far. Dear Lord, we're thankful for this day that that you've given us the uh, the breath of life and the strength of mind and body to be here. And now, dear Lord, it, as the, with the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and forevermore. And they all said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> device is ready to help. 